general relativity step by step. We've been looking at the metric tensor being composed of two, two quantities, the flat space metric and something small, which we're going to hope helps us to understand gravitational waves. And I made the observation that one can raise and lower the indices of H using the flat space metric rather than the full metric, simply because we are considering only linear uh, terms. We're ignoring terms of order H squared, um, uh, which is a good start. What I'm going to do now is ask how uh, G alpha beta, how it transforms under a Lorentz transformation. You'll remember the Lorentz transformations. We normally write them down like this, with one upstairs and one downstairs index. Uh, and it's going to be gamma minus gamma v zero zero uh, minus gamma v gamma zero zero zeros here and identity matrix there. This is a boost of v in the x direction. That's t x y and z, and we're moving things in the x direction. And of course, gamma is one over root one minus v squared, which uh, which we see all the time. So. Uh, and the way we usually use it is we usually say something like x alpha bar equals gamma alpha beta x beta, and we usually use it like that. Uh, but of course, uh, what I'm what I want to do is to show you how the metric tensor behaves. So we've got g alpha beta, and we want to consider it in a barred reference frame. The bar being a, a Lorentz transform. So we've got. I'll just write the skeleton in first. G alpha beta. I don't like using Adele, so let's talk about uh, mu and nu here. So mu and nu have to sum here and here, and alpha and beta are free on the left-hand side and beta. Incidentally, you'll quite often see this alpha bar beta bar equals, let me just write it out. Quite often you'll see that on the grounds that the Bar above a symbol should be associated with the index, not the, not the tensor. Uh, sometimes I'll, I might go back to using that notation, but for the moment I'm just going to stick to this. So what does that equal? G alpha beta bar. Well, of course, that equals on the one hand, it equals uh, eta alpha beta plus h bar alpha beta. And of course, we know what that is and we don't know what this is. Well, that equals the Lorentz tensor. I'm going to go back to this. Uh, this this notation here, new beta, and instead of g, I'm going to write down it. Uh, write down the metric tensor in terms of its decomposition into the Minkowski metric and something small. Equals mu alpha mu beta, oops, mu mu plus mu alpha mu beta h mu nu. I want you to see how I'm casually using the summation convention at every stage now. It makes it so much easier. Um, well, that's great. Um, what's this thing here? Well, I can just write that down. That's eta alpha beta. Why is that? That is because this thing here tells me what my squared um, 0, 1. That tells me how to work out my square displacement d d ds squared. This thing here tells me how to work out my ds squared. And the whole point of relativity is that whatever your speed relative to somebody else, you have still got the same local physics. You have still got this matrix here, this metric tensor here always works for you whether you're moving at three quarters of the speed of light relative to somebody else, well, that, that's precisely it. You can construct your own reference frame in which this, um, this metric is true. And so when you Lorentz transform eta, you get back to eta again, just by the equivalence principle. So that tells me that, I'm just writing this equation out here again, eta alpha beta plus h bar alpha beta equals the right-hand side, which is from the equivalence principle eta alpha beta, plus these terms here, mu alpha nu beta, h mu nu. And of course, these guys cancel. Actually, I'm going to cancel them in red, just because I can. I haven't used red for a long time. Although somebody told me the other day they couldn't see red. So, red. Thick, thick lines. They, they, they told me that the red was not, not particularly visible on YouTube video, but... Uh, 
So I'm going to try and make it a bit thicker. Alpha, beta equals Lorentz transform, mu alpha. Lorentz transform again, nu beta h mu nu. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time pondering what this equation means. What this equation means is that h mu nu transforms in the same way as a real tensor, as a real second rank tensor, second rank tensor. And of course, because of the argument up uh, that I've made here about raising and lowering indices, we can raise one or both of the indices using, using this formula here, and we'll see that the same thing occurs with two upstairs indices as I've got here with two downstairs indices. So, h mu nu transforms in the same way as a real second run tensor under the Lorentz transforms. Well, that's good news. That means that we can treat H as though, treat H mu nu, as though it is a real tensor, but there's a rider. Defined on a flat space background. And it is not. The fiction is that this quantity here is, a, it's as though you've got a flat space and you're painting a picture on that space. You're painting contour lines or whatever of this thing h mu nu on a flat space. And that is not true. Space is curved. You have no flat space on which to paint anything. But because of this mathematical trickery here, you can treat this quantity h as though it really is a real tensor, in much the same way as the electromagnetic stress energy tensor f mu nu is a tensor defined on flat space. But you can think of h mu nu as though it really is a real tensor. It's not a tensor. You cannot transform it. I mean, I've transformed it here with the Lorentz transforms, which is great. But let's just say I wanted to use h theta space. You'll remember this kind of peculiar h theta space. And what were my rules now? x equals h and y equals h tan theta. If you wanted to express h in terms of not the Minkowski metric minus one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one, but the metric space or the metric tensor corresponding to these coordinates, you'd be out of luck. It simply wouldn't work. What we've done is to define a very restricted class of coordinate transforms, which are called the Lorentz transforms. And we have observed that to first order, the transformation rules work as you expect them to work. The trouble is, it's a pernicious logical flaw to think of h mu nu as being something superimposed upon flat space. It is not a second rank tensor superimposed upon flat space. It is an approximation to the true reality, which is that your metric tensor is in fact curved. So there's a little bit of a double think needed here. It, it, it's a very... The mathematics is so nice and it's so close to what you want to be true. You so much want space to be flat because your brain is designed at least my brain is designed to think that space is flat and i can superimpose things like a temperature field on it or an electromagnetic field on it i can do all sorts of fun things on a flat space my brain is not not suitable or not suited for thinking about curved space and i can get away without the mental cognitive load of curved space by adopting the fiction that this thing H is something defined on a flat space background, which it is not. But it almost is. It almost is. And that close approximation makes the mathematics a billion times easier. And I'm going to use it over and over and over again. But you've got to remember in the back of your mind, it's just a metaphor. It's not real. It's just a convenient fiction that helps 
us human beings think about it. So I'm going to stop there. Stop, 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 stop.